a journalist turned politician and the crisis on college campuses as seen through the eyes of the editors of two student newspapers. The Point starts right now. Storyteller, journalist, TV star. Viewers of this station know him well. You, Lou Young found a new career in retirement, believe it or not. <laughs> Deputy Mayor of Mamaroneck and member of the Board of Trustees. Lou, what's it like to go on the other side of the microphone? Well, de Deputy Mayor ended a couple of days ago because uh, uh, we have a new Deputy Mayor now. That's only usually for a year and, and a new appointment was made. But I am a trustee and uh, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's fabulous. Uh, uh, I, I mean, you get to do things and they actually happen. You don't have to. In other words, you're the guy people have to complain to to make things happen. So, so, I like it. so what have you made happen? I mean, oh, what do we do? We, uh, we, you know, we had flooding issues in Mamaroneck. I know it well. And um, uh, I remembered that uh, 30 years ago I'd been there, and, and they said they had a plan for the flooding and all this stuff. And and then I moved there and it flooded again. They said, yeah, we got a plan for the flooding. And I, I got and to they get, still have a plan. Well, they do, but now that the people are actually actually acting on it, and uh, one of the things uh, that uh, my colleagues and I uh, helped instill is that uh, the village has taken responsibility for this because up till recently they were waiting for somebody to come save them the federal government the state government somebody was going to do this for them it floods in our village the rivers are in our village we're cleaning our own rivers. We spent uh, uh, over a million dollars wow. this past year taking stuff out of the rivers and this last uh, flood we had um, it's still flooded but I believe it was mitigated because uh, we took action. So you went from being a journalist covering politicians uh -huh. to actually being a politician. What was that like? Was it like, oh my God, now I have to actually make the decisions or was it just a natural flow? I, I was hesitant, but the, uh, the person who got me involved uh, showed me a couple of things, asked for my help, and asked me to put a critical eye on, uh, on the village government as a, as a newcomer. I call it... Um, people go nose blind. In other words, like if you live in a house or somebody lives in a house with a lot of cats and they've got a, a litter box and after a while they don't smell the litter box but somebody new comes over, they can smell it. Well, that's because the people who live in the house have gone nose blind. And, and, and as a newscomer, a newcomer, I was not nose blind to some of the some of the problems, and I, I think we uh, we tackled them. So uh, you think so, that you, so? Basically, you're saying you brought a different sensibility to the problems that you were seeing, and that they may have ignored. And and, and the two people I ran with also, we had, we had we I have uh, two uh, uh, fellow trustees who are uh, like-minded, and uh, you know it's a five-member board, so if you can count to three, so there you go. So when you ran, did you have to like have like? Um, lawn signs and go door <laughs> all to that. Door, yep. Go door to door. We went door to door. Shake hands, do yep. coffees, raise did, money. Did all, all that. that. Did all that. What was that like for you? It was um, uh, interesting. I happen to like the knocking on doors and talking to people a lot. It's a li lot like doing MOS. You know what? M <laughs> and for folks, man here, on the street interviews. Man the on the street interviews. Happens right after our show or during our show. Yeah. When you when you stop and you and you ask people, what do you think about this? And then sometimes you have to explain what you're talking about before they react. It's that you knock on a door. I'm running. I'm here. Uh, I, I want, you know, this is the, these are the issues, and um, and people tell give you feedback, and it's a great way. It's a great way to campaign. It's a great way to govern because you talk to people. You're not sitting in an office just thinking what you think. So basically, people come up to you on the street and they say, "Hey, Lou, I want you to fix my sidewalk." Yeah. <laughs> Seriously? Yep. What's what's that like? Well, I mean, first of all. I don't. We have a we have a, a village manager form of government. So, the we have we hire a guy, a very a very competent man who is well paid, who runs this fifty million dollar business a year business, and uh, he works for us. Everybody in the village works for him. Uh, it would be a her if it was a female. So um, I can't call up the DPW head or, or or somebody and get something done, but I can call him or I can call his assistant and and say. This is what this person is saying. Can you fix it? And and we have a good, uh, an excellent village manager, Jerry Barbario, who um, who you know who gets on it and gets it done. So, uh, here's the question: Do you have a backlog of complaints? I mean, that's what everybody says. I call City Hall and they don't answer. So I call Mamaroneck Town Hall. What happens? 
Um, we have a we have a uh, a backlog of grievances, <laughs> um, uh, uh, complaints, <laughs> things that we can actually do things about. Uh, um, uh, no, I mean because there's, I dealt with one just the other day. But but there are people who we're going to say you need to do more about this. You need to be more transparent. You right. need to you know they, they, there's no there there. They 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 just have a. Uh, they're upset about an issue and they want they want results. So in an, in an age when people are shying away from politics and, and seasoned veterans are quitting, they're mm. running for the exits, why is it important to get involved in local politics and to take care of things, which is what you are doing? Because it's where local politics is where the rubber meets the road. I mean, p some people say, oh, well, uh, we have this these uh, divisive uh, national politics, but local politics is different. Uh, no, it's not. It's the same. In other words, people are all for affordable housing, but not where I live, right? <laughs> They're all for this, but not my neighborhood, right? So it's where it's where real problems are are uh, are taken care of, and it's where you have to. It's where people put up or shut up. It's easy to have an opinion about something. It's hard to actually do something. But is it more difficult to make people swallow the things like not in my neighborhood, not in my street? I don't make them swallow. I try to convince them. But when when it's your neighbor, <laughs> I mean, it's not like, you know, somebody who in, you know, has like in New York City, you don't really know the mayor. In Mamaroneck, they know you. Yes. Uh, and, well, you, that's... and then they can to your face tell you you're right, you're wrong, you're you're smart, you're stupid. Or the, or they can say just horrible things about you on social media, which which happens all the time. <laughs> uh, and, and and how do you feel about that? Well, I I don't like it. I I I, I had to stop. I stopped arguing on social media because uh, you stopped arguing. Uh, yeah. This is not the Lu Young I know. Because, because you know, he, 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 here I am, um, you know, uh, playing uh, playing one up and gotcha with uh, constituents who who don't agree with me, and it's just not a good look. So, um, uh, sure, maybe they're wrong, but they have a right to be wrong. All right. So, so uh, 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 you, you let them do that. I try to correct misinformation, and um, and some people I'm never gonna never gonna reach. So it uh, so it doesn't matter. And you know the loud voices aren't always the the uh, the majority. Um, uh, That's true. I mean, we got twenty thousand people in in the village where I, where I live, and twenty thousand opinions. Well, no, we got the same six people every week <laughs> telling it. So, so that's so that's that you know. So so a small group shows up and and, and yells and screams. Yet there's twenty thousand people who just want you to do the right thing and not and not have to make them come down there and beg you. So you said that you know some of the issues that you're dealing with you actually covered as a journalist. You talked about flooding, but what are some of the other issues that you have to deal with now um, as being you know on the board of trustees all right well, well one thing uh, would be um, uh, uh, voter in, enfranchisement in other words um, uh, right now on the on the governor's desk is a is a uh, is a bill to move uh, a county and town elections right to even years it's a big issue all across the state it's a big a big issue all across the country and that's because that's when people vote but but the the gamesmen the political gamesmen like the off-year elections because that's Why? because that's where they can they can goose the count. They can get the, uh, the, the, they can they can do something when nobody when because people with 200 are votes you can win. We had a we we had a, a, a an election yesterday in Mamaroneck. It was a big we had a big scandal with our our library right, and they 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 put their budget up and it, and it passed in a uh, in an election. There was 200 votes cast. It's because nobody knew there was an election. It's it's it, now that's it, your fault. Well, it's not my fault. It's not my election. It was the library. It, it, was, it was the library. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I think the calculation was if nobody knows about it, we'll, we, it'll, it'll sink so through. So they basically like these off year elections because then you can do what you want to do and you get your 12 people to the polls and you win. There's a guy in, in the neighboring town who, who got elected uh, on a write in. All right, now, uh, God bless him. You got to record and write it. But, With how many votes? Oh, uh, um, under 200, I think. <laughs> but, 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 um, but uh, you know, th that's not going to happen in, a, in an even year election. So I guess the question is, you know, you talk about the governor. I wonder, given the fact that you're, you know, in local government, like what's your view of the people who are elected to represent you, the governor, the assembly person, the senator, you know, are they people that you contact to, to help you out, to get money for your talk town? To, talk to Steve Otis and Shelley Mayer all the time, all the time. Um, there, there are... Uh, but do they deliver for you? Yes. 
Yes, they're terrific. They're terrific. Uh, a state senator, ter terrific assemblyman. Um, uh, we talked to um, uh, the, the the Senator um, Gillibrand and, and, and Senator Schumer's office. They're very helpful. Congressman Bowman's office. I've met him a number of times. Yeah, and Co Congressman Bowman is having a little bit of a problem. He's got, a, he's got an issue. Where I'm, I, I, last time I met him, I said, can you try to not to step on every landmine, please? You know, so. So how do you, just we have only about a minute left, but how do you feel about the fact that George Latimer, the Westchester County executive, has decided to challenge Mr. Bowman in a primary. It's interesting. Oh, Lou, you're turning into a politician. It's interesting. I, 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 I love George, and even though I didn't support uh, Bowman in, uh, when he first ran against Elliot Engel or when he ran for election, I've come to appreciate him more now. And uh, uh, and so I'm not I'm not necessarily uh, I, I I'd have to I have to wait and see how this turns. So we have about out. 15 seconds left. What do you say to Bowman when you, what does Bowman say to you when you say don't step on every landmine? He says I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, I mean you, you, you know I mean there's ways to say things and there's ways not to say things. I understand and 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 sometimes politics is where nuance goes to die. So okay, so we're gonna have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation with Lou continues right after the show on our streaming channel CBS News New York.